Hello. Today I'm going to be doing some live coding working on the Argos Translate Tags module. So you can see the Tags module here and effectively what it does is what's being done in this snippet here. It manages structured text in formats like HTML, Markdown, or something like this. And so Argos Translate has this more abstract interface with these iTag um, objects. And so you um, do the equivalent of a HTML tag around a piece of text, um, and then you convert it to the Argos Translate format, and then Argos Translate is able to translate these, and then you can convert it back to whatever format you want it in. Um, so in this example, we have the sentence, I went to Paris last summer, and so this would be the equivalent of the HTML like, I went to um, italic, exactly. Um, and so you would convert this HTML to this tag object, pass it through Argos Translate, and then um, convert it back to HTML. And so this is what's used in my Translate HTML project and it's used also in the um, in Libre Translate both for translating HTML, text files, uh, different document formats, and EPUB files. Um, and so it's a pretty simple implementation here in Translate HTML. You can see um, you have a um, like blacklist of tags and then you convert the um, the HTML syntax tree to the iTag interface, and then you convert it back. And so to translate HTML, you parse the HTML, you convert to the iTags, you translate them, you convert back to HTML, and then you have translated um, HTML. So. The kind of straightforward way to implement this would be to um, essentially pass these tags into the language model and then have the language model um, understand the tags and then um, be able to output translated text with the tags um, included on the other side. Um, and so that's what I'm going to work on today. Um, the way Argos Translate currently works is it effectively will just translate all of these independently. So it'll translate, I went to, it'll translate Paris, and then it'll translate last summer. And so this kind of works, um, but the main issue here is that it will um, kind of miss context. context. So potentially you'd want to translate I went to differently depending on what's here or what's here. And so it's not really an ideal implementation. So what I tried to do was um, translate this entire sentence and then translate just this inner part. And then I try to inject this inner part, the translation of this inner part into the translation of this entire sentence. Um, so then you could use the context and then kind of match and find what part in the target translation output should be in the tags on the other side. Um, but this didn't really work especially well. Um, so I've always wanted to do the strategy I'm working on today, which is um, passing the tags through the language model so that the language model can kind of understand what tag in the input text maps to what tag in the output text. Um, but the language models I've been training haven't really been able to handle that in the past. However, with um, this current version of Argus Translate, and I'm on the dev branch right now, So I'm in the dev branch. 
So this version uses um, this version uses more powerful pre-trained language models. In this case, the M2M100 model trained by Meta, and it is able to handle tags in the translation, at least in some of my tests. So that's what I'm going to be working on today. So let me get this set up. Um, So I have um, debugging output in, enabled here, so it wouldn't by default um, show all of this. So I'll let that run. Um, and then we can start looking at this. Okay. Yeah, so this is the old thing I was talking about. I'm going to get rid of this. Um, okay. Um, So, uh, okay, so this is downloaded. So this is, I downloaded this um, M2M100 model. So we can see how those translate from English to Spanish. Um, what was the sentence? I went to Paris last summer. I went to Paris last summer. There you go. I went to Paris last summer. Um, so what I think this new model is able to do is it can handle tags like this. Okay, so there we go. Um, so in this case, since this whole sentence went through the language model, it was able to use um, it was able to use context for the whole sentence to translate the whole sentence and then to figure out where these tags should be in the target text. Um, so effectively, I want to replace this. Um, Translate tags. Um, okay, um, so I may do a similar thing here where at max I'm only going to do. Um, so, so, what this is doing is this is kind of the most naive solution where you just break the tags up into the text they contain and then translate that text and then put them back together again. And at the high level, I think this is generally what I do want to do. So like if there's a paragraph entity like tag in HTML, I'm not going to combine, try to combine it with like a heading above it. Um, so I really just do translate those separately. 
So it's really this um, this this section here that um, is going to be replaced where I want to keep the context. So I'm going to comment this out. Um, And then, okay, I don't think I can do that. Um, um, and then um, I'll probably just use the same example here. Interesting. Um, oh, interesting. Uh, so I got the first and second language, and which is like English and Arabic or something. Um, okay, because Arabic starts with A. Um, so I'm going to do something a little easier to read. So I think I can do. Um, Hmm. Oh, I think this is just an actual bug um, in this. Forty one. Yeah, so I don't think this is real. Um, can you do next on a filter? Do I just not even need the list? Um, Okay, there we go. Um,
Okay, there we go. Yo fui a, and then tag Paris, of Rano Pasado. Okay, perfect. Um, so this totally is breaking it into three parts um, right now because I removed removed this guy. So I want a new implementation of an equivalent to inject tags, but it's putting them in place in the translation. So um, let's do that. which I call it. I'm translating, I'm kind of translating like a small chunk of tags. Tag, what is Copilot recommending? Uh, okay, this is almost identical. Tag chunk. So the first step is to um, find the inner tags and um, convert them into like an actual string of tags. So I'm not sure exactly how to do this. Um, It's also interesting that you could get some issues where you put it into the language model and then it kind of just like fumbles the tag somehow and um, then you like break the output. So I may want some like safety check that like if, if it comes back wrong, then I just default to the, um, the other strategy, which is what I do with the tag injection. I think none represents it just kind of failing to um, do a better strategy than the naive strategy of um, just translating each tag independently. So, what's in a tag? So let's do the prompt string and then for child in tag dot children. Oh, here we go. Um, so this is close. So I don't actually precisely want the text. I want the I want to do um, essentially this tag Um, so, at least for now, I'm limiting this to, um, I'm going to limit this to just depth one. Um, so I can kind of make this assumption, translate tag chunk. Um, So 
depth, what's depth again? Depth represents um, a string has depth zero, I tag empty has depth zero, tag string has depth one. So essentially I'm only going to try doing um, try doing this if it's an example like this where this this thing here has depth one this tag has depth two so there may be multiple of these but I'm just going to put a tag around them um, and I'm going to do my like custom tag so that it's unlikely to um, conflict There definitely is some danger here of kind of adversarial input. Like someone could, um, someone could try to uh, like trick the language model into like injecting some text they want into um, into kind of a, a tag where it doesn't belong. Um, but so I'll have to keep a keep an eye out for how to protect against that. Um, okay, but let's just try this basic solution. Okay, so here we go. Um, I want to see the let me see the translation results. If we uh, um, Paris Alvarana Posada, um, so that seems wrong. Like it should, um, it should be hitting here, right? Okay, so clearly not. Um, so I'm going to try to use the Python debugger here. I wonder if uh, I always have to look up how to insert the Python debugger, but I wonder if GitHub Copilot can help me. There we go. Um, okay, if type tag, so it's print tag, tag dot children. Okay, so this is the main, the main thing. Print depth tag, so I'm expecting this to be two. It's zero. Okay, so that's the issue. Um, Tag. 
Max steps D for tag in children. Wait, to look at this. Um, Max. Wait, is this shouldn't it be like plus one? Return max depth t. Um, I feel like this should be plus one. Oops. So it's funny. This um, I put a lot of effort into writing this inject tag inference thing, but when I would look at the console output it seems like it was almost never used <laughs> and I wonder if this was the bug and this has just been latent in Argos Translate for like a year um, that'd be sad all right let's let's try it though Still not, we're still not hitting the part I think we should be. Okay, so this is right. Oh, I just deleted the PJ debug. Okay, so here we go. Let's just walk through this in the debugger. Print tag dot children. Okay. It's not. So that's wrong, but um, this this prompt looks correct. Um, okay, so now I want to reconstruct these tags from the prompt. So um, translated prompt. And then I want to parse these um, Argos tags. So um, so how do, how do I want to do this? So I clearly want the number of Argos tags going in to be the same as the number of Argos tags going out. Um, So maybe I um, maybe I um, like rebuild the tag and then check that. That would seem like the straightforward way to do it. Um, so. Um, I wonder if there's a good way in Python to just like parse a, um, parse kind of like opening and closing tags with, um, I don't know, these are the standard library or just like some, some kind of more native trick instead of like writing some kind of big hand parser. Um, 
I wonder if GitHub Copilot can help parse um, translated prompt to an i tag tree. Yeah, exactly. So GitHub recognized it was a tree. Um, so no, uh, no suggestions. Okay. Um, parse a string of tags to a tree Python. Um, import anything. Yeah, this is kind of a lot. Hmm. Anyone else has better answers? Um, so I think I may be able to just write something simple myself and because this is really just a string with one tag and then I'm able to fail here. So I can just return none and then it'll fall back to the naive uh, implementation. So. Um, so let's do, oops. Okay, so um, well, wait, what does it say? Um, not quite. Um, So tag equals tag.
back one. Um, and then close in. I should um should make this a variable somewhere. Open tag index plus length echoes open tag to precisely. Um, Okay, so that seems good. Um, so now I want a way to verify. Okay, actually, I'll just leave this for now. This should work, and then I'll do the kind of verification later. Weighted tag. Okay. Interesting. So it lost the um, the uh, beginning. So let's see what's going on. So the prompt looks good. Um, translated prompt. Okay, so the translation looks good. Case where 
this isn't negative one, but um, if tag is greater than zero, no, um, yeah, oh yeah, if open tag index is greater than zero, exactly. Technically unnecessary, but I think it'll be clearer. Um, open tag index. Yeah. Okay, here we go. in the middle. Oh wait, this is kind of wrong. Uh, that append. Um, tag. Why is this empty? So this should be this uh, tag inner text. Um, this all seems right. Okay, this is good. So opening tag index should be zero. Good. So this should be 11, which is like here, zero plus is this 11 characters, one, two, three, four. Okay, yeah. So it should be here. And then closing tag index, closing tag index should be 16. So these five characters in the middle should get, should be tag inner text. Okay. Um, hmm. How about this broken?
this all seems right. But then translated tag children one children. This seems right. Um, Translated tag dot children one dot children. Huh. So it does seem right. Um okay. Oh, yeah, this all looks good. Perfect. Um, okay, so that is doing it. So we're translating a sentence with the um, um, by passing the tags through the language model. So I'll have a quick uh, doc string. Um, Um, okay, so I like this, I like this, I like this, I want to take another look at this at some point. This is the thing I can get rid of. Um, which it seems like might have not even been working due to the depth bug, but um, it was kind of unnecessarily complicated anyways, and this is a better approach. So, um, okay, yeah, I like this. Um, So I'm going to commit this. Um, use the language model for tag translation. Pass, pass the entire, what is it? Um, pass tags into the language model. Translation to preserve serve context and then reconstruct tags after translation. After translation. Okay. Um I like that. So the next big question is um, in the case this fails, either just kind of by accident or adversarially, how do I deal with that? Um, so, like one failure case is we pass this prompt into the language model, and then it um, then it um, it essentially loses one of the tags, and so the HTML we pass back has a different structure than um, than the HTML that was passed in. So my thinking on this is that the main thing I want to do here is just preserve the structure. Um, if people have adversarial prompts or something to make the translation text different than it should be, um, that's kind of an issue everywhere and we'll kind of deal with that in other ways. But here I just want to maintain the um, the variant that we um, that the, the structure that comes in is the structure that comes out, which is easy to do if we're just breaking everything into its smallest component text and then translating that. But in this case, if kind of this more fancy logic of like constructing a prompt, 
fails, then I just want to return none here and fall back. So, um, 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 I think I want to just make a method that does oh, def is same structure. Um, I what does it say? I tag. Yeah, exactly. Is this it? Tags are two tags of the same structure. Tag one, the first tag to Tag two, the second. Yes. Tag one is string. Beautiful. I like this. I didn't even know this existed. Same structure. Tag one dot children. One. Tag one dot children. Yeah. Wow. Huge win for GitHub Copilot there. Um. Okay, so if not, is the same structure. Oh, it even did my login format? Okay, I like this. Um, yep. And then I want to handle this here. How did I do that before? Um, Um, so if it returns none, wait, what? This seems wrong. Oh, no, this is right. But if it's none, I want to do this case. Um, wait, this just seems off. Okay, translate tag, tag translation. I almost want to switch the order of these arguments, uh, or parameters, whatever. Um, hmm. Okay, whatever. Um, 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 um. Okay. Um. So this should be translated tag chunk equals
Okay. Like this. Okay, so I think there we have it. So this this whole prompt was passed into yeah, as you can see here. This whole prompt was passed into the M2M100 language model. And then we reconstructed the tags on the other side. And um, then it, uh, we have this, this translation with the tags. And this should be a non-breaking change with the current implementation. So I can either cut the video off here or do a demo of translate HTML. Um, yeah, let's do the demo. So some examples um, okay yeah let's try this one translate HTML URL This is also wrong. Huh. Um, what's going on here? Put the debugger in. Um, sample slash. I, I'm also using the dev build of Argos Translate 2, so some of this logic may actually be broken. Good. We should have English and Spanish, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Interesting. I this is going to be a quick little demo. Yeah, this looks good. Um, huh. Oh, so is it breaking trying to translate this? Hmm. I think this could be a bug in the more core Argos translate that it's um this um this new line it was trying to translate. Where is it? Yeah, this guy is causing issues. Um, there, I should definitely be able to handle just passing a new line in. So, zero division error. Inside HTML. Translate tags. Okay. Um, Okay, I'll put the debugger here. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's breaking in um, this thing, which I said I was going to fix. Um, should I just apply? I guess I don't really see why this is necessary at all. Um, I think this may have been kind of a hack for a fringe is issue. Okay, there we go. Yeah, there we go. We're translating, uh, translating everything. Um, I'm gonna have to uh, 
write this to a file. What is print that HTML return? Um, oh, perfect. Um, so I just want to write this to a file. Okay. Use Copilot for this. Open file. So this is some of the uh, the text from my website here. Um, let me see what actually gets translated. Okay, it's translating the bottom of the page. That's a good sign. What? What? Oh, um, I think this is doing some sort of a kind of a hack to. Um, to um it like attaches the soup objects to the um
fifty super. So it's complaining here, super of i tag, returns beautiful server and return to the i tag tag object to convert to soup. I tag dot soup. Um It just seems bizarre. Um, soup. So I'm converting the Argos translate i tag to the beautiful soup object, which is the HTML parser. Um, so I pass in the i tag, and if the i tag is a string, then this makes sense, right? And then soup equals i tag. The i tag doesn't have a soup object. Um, soup of i tag. So this makes sense. This line doesn't really make sense. Um, I tag of soup. Except so we attach it here. Oh, but I make new tags inside. Um, oh, so I think my current implementation may rely on passing the. Um, oh, I need to pass attach this attribute in, which I just so okay. Um, so at least my current implementation of translate HTML, I attach the soup object to the tag, and then I expect that the tag will remain the same tag object as it passes through the Argos tag system. But I just broke that with my change, which we can see um, like here. Like I'm just making new tags all over the place. So I wonder if I can either, I think it's either fix this or fix the tag implementation or the translate HTML. Um, um, um. Um, Cause I kind of am rebuilding it here. Uh, so let's see if I can fix it in the tags module. Um, translate tag equals tag. I kind of knew this was a hack at the time, but there's um, it's not a great way around it. I don't think. Um, Um, let's see if I can fix it here, though. That would be a nice kind of thing to have that you can pass, you can attach things to the iTag tag object and have the iTag objects pass through and get translated. So this part is fine. This part is fine. This is fine. This is fine. It is really just uh, it is here. Okay.
so tricky because I'm trying to modify this. I want to kind of modify this original tag, but then if it fails, I want to be able to like give up and not have it be modified. So I think if I wanted, I, I want to find a better long-term solution, but for now I'm going to try to just copy the, the tag tree in. Um, since this is only depth two, it's making this a lot easier. So for line range length tag dot children. Um, I should do a comment and maybe get help go probably help me. Copy the translated tag values into tag to the yeah, back of four. Because these these children Tag that children I yeah exactly if exactly okay so let's try the other example too. Um, which I think is a bit uh, faster to run. So this is the other example. Um, so it just is going to pass through a very basic thing. Um, okay, no, this isn't great. Um, um, um. So I need to do this same thing to do the new method for um, getting the language or the translation, underlying translation. run this one first.
Hmm. Tag object with no attribute soup. So I'm copying it over, I'm copying the content of translated tag. So I'm translating tag to translated tag and then copying the content of translated tag back into tag. Um, so I, I want to find a better way to kind of think about this. Um, but for now, perfect. Okay. So I just want to translate my website with the new logic, and then I'll uh, then I'll uh, end the video. So the, the model I've been using today is the M2M100 one, um, which I've been using a lot for dev because it kind of has some nice features. And I'm planning to use kind of a model similar to it when I do release Argos Translate 2.0. Um, but for now, 1.0 Argos Translate works pretty well. And uh, I found this is, can be pretty slow, where one of the main advantages of Argos Translate is that it's a lot faster and cheaper than a lot of other solutions out there. Um, so this change actually won't be in any sort of production release for uh, at least quite a bit. Okay, I think I'm translating the bottom of the page, so I'm getting close. I also find a bad bug, it seems, in, uh, in uh, the the depth thing that was kind of breaking my whole old system. So I, it turns out um, in a roundabout way, since we're missing this, Argos Translate 1 is going to always use the naive solution, uh, which I kind of already knew it was doing. Um, so it's just going to break every HTML tree up into uh, its kind of most basic elements of strings and then translate those strings and then put it all back together again. Um, okay, we're almost there. Oh no, what? Oh no, that's fine. So the, uh, oh, so look, okay. So this was what I was talking about. So the prompt was, um, the prompt. So I think the prompt is th this maybe, and then it outputted. Um, it didn't do the tag correctly. It did instead of making this a tag, it did l argos tag telegram instead of like telegram within the tags, and so then we caught it. And so then we fell back to the naive solution. But I should have a... Uh...
transit diversion now. Okay, look at this. So this is my website translated to um, Spanish. Um, I don't know why the formatting is broken. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so the formatting is broken, kind of not for real reasons, but just because I uh, don't have the um, don't have the like style sheets also copied over. Um, So, so it didn't even translate that. Um, sometimes like really short stuff, it almost just says it's best left in English, which in some cases may be right, but here we go. Argos traducion, open NMT para traducciones y se puede utilizar como una biblioteca de Python. Línea de comando u aplicación GUI Argos Translate soporta la instalación de paquetes de modelo de lenguaje que son archivos zip con una extensión Argos Model que continúe los datos necesar necesarios para la traducción. Libre Translate es un API y una aplicación web construida sobre la parte superior de Argos Translate. So this looks good. And um, like I was showing earlier, I exclude certain, um, certain, oh, certain types of tag like code. So this wasn't translated. Um, and so this all just gets passed through as HTML we maintain the um, link structure here. The code is fine. Um, we can translate the heading. So yeah, this looks great. Um, thanks for watching.